All right, so today we're going to talk about what happens if you get your blood test back and your cholesterol is high or your LDL is high. Um, should you be concerned or not? Let's discuss this topic. And listen, I do understand the concern because you have all this data out there telling you to stop consuming cholesterol. And here you are on a ketogenic diet, eating a ton of fat, and all of a sudden your cholesterol is high. And your doctor wants to put you on statins, and maybe your family is like, oh my gosh, are you sure you should be doing that? Puts a lot of doubt in your mind. So let me just cover some key facts about this so you are not concerned. Most people that do keto get a lower cholesterol level and a lower LDL. Other people are hyper responders to a higher fat diet. So basically, they're going to have a spike in cholesterol and a spike of LDL. But realize that is temporary. It's not a long-term thing. So there's two things happening when you do keto. Number one, you're increasing more dietary fat. That fat has to be digested. It has to go through your body. And that's one reason why cholesterol will increase. Number two, you're getting more fat burning, more fat released, because your insulin is down, because your carbs are lower. Now think about it. Your fat cell are made up of triglycerides and cholesterol. That's what's in the fat cell. Well, guess what? When we burn this, both of these have to be released, right? So you, because you're no longer running on glucose as much, you're running primarily on fat fuel. Well, guess what? These two are going to be released and they have to come out through the body. Okay, so now let's talk about total cholesterol. Not sure if you know this. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But cholesterol is made by your body. Your body makes 3 thousand milligrams per day. Your liver produces most of it, okay? So if your body makes it, is it really that bad? So the reason why your body makes so much is this is a necessary uh, substance that you need to make the membranes or outer coating or walls of your cells. So the, the cellular walls of your cells are made out of cholesterol. Cholesterol is needed to make hormones. Cholesterol is needed to make bile to help you digest. Cholesterol is needed to make vitamin D. Cholesterol is needed to repair the body. So cholesterol is not just this thing that clogs up the arteries and causes a heart attack. Okay, so that's the purpose of cholesterol. But then what is LDL? Okay, low density lipoprotein. Okay, so LDL is not cholesterol. It's a protein. LDL is a boat, a cargo ship that carries cholesterol, okay, and triglycerides. That's what it is. Now, LDL has a primary function. I don't know if you ever thought about it, like, why do we have LDL? What's the purpose of LDL? It'd be a really good question to ask your doctor to see what he, he or she says, because a lot of people don't even know what LDL. All they know is that LDL is bad, okay, bad cholesterol. It's not even cholesterol. It's a boat that carries cholesterol and triglycerides in vitamin E, okay? So LDL has a primary function of carrying energy. What's the energy? It's the triglycerides because now your body is running off of fat. This is the fuel source. You're no longer using glucose. You're using fat. Triglyceride is the main fuel source. So LDL has to carry that energy. Now, if your body's now running on fat fuel, is it possible that you might need more boats to carry more of this around to the cells? That's what happens. So LDL has a primary function of carrying energy and nutrients to the cell, and it provides the triglycerides for energy. Now, the cholesterol that is being carried with it on this little boat is there to repair anything that's damaged and along for the ride. So here we have this little boat that's delivering the triglycerides to the cell, cholesterol to the cells that need it, and other functions too, like um, destroying pathogens, acting as an antioxidant, supplying raw material for the cell membranes and the hormones and the bile and the vitamin D. So it's doing all those actions. And then once it unloads all this cargo, HDL, comes from the vascular system and brings it back into the liver 
to recycle it. So we have this great exchange of this LDL boat bringing things to the cell and then HDL taking what's left and bringing it back to the liver to recycle. That's the simplicity of it. So is LDL really bad and HDL really good? No, you, they're both good. They both are necessary for this thing to happen. Now, there's another term I want to define. It's called remnant cholesterol. What is that? Well, most people think that when they get their cholesterol values back, that their total cholesterol really is just LDL plus HDL. That would give the total cholesterol. But that's not entirely true. There's something called remnant cholesterol, which is basically taking the total cholesterol and minusing the LDL and the HDL, and then you get an amount. That's the extra cholesterol that doesn't make up LDL and HDL. And remnant cholesterol is one of the best predictors of heart disease, way more important than LDL or HDL. And it's very easy to figure this out. All you do is you take your total cholesterol minus LDL and HDL, and you get this number. If the number is less than 17, that's optimal. If the number is between 18 to 23, it's okay. The number is between 23 to 29, that's concerning. If the number is over 30, there is a problem. But you're gonna have higher amounts of remnant cholesterol when your insulin is too high. So you're really only gonna see higher numbers of remnant cholesterol when you're consuming the wrong foods and your insulin is too high. When you're doing keto, your insulin is gonna go down and you're gonna see remnant cholesterol very low. So that's one point. The next point I want to talk about is that there are two different types of LDL called particles. Okay. Now, if you're concerned, you can go to your doctor and get an advanced test. It's called NMR lipo profile. Okay. And what that will measure is the particle size of the LDL. And there's two patterns, pattern A and pattern B. Pattern A is the buoyant, big, fluffy LDL particles, okay? That's the large ones. Those are non-concerning. They're floating around, and they're not going to create damage, okay? Then you have the pattern B, which are small, dense-type particles, and those are the ones that are more likely to create placking and a clogged artery, okay? And, of course, you're going to see this when you have high insulin and you're on a high refined carbohydrate diet. When you keto, you'll see more of this. So I just wanted to cover several points on why your cholesterol and LDL may spike temporarily when you do keto. And it's not just a simple answer. You have to really understand the whole picture of what's happening and really understand what cholesterol is and what LDL is and what it's doing. And I highly recommend that you watch all the videos that I have on cholesterol as well as the videos from a guy by the name of Dave Feldman, which I put a link down below, and he'll give you additional data on the topic. And I'll also include a few links down below of some keto-friendly cardiologist. All right, guys, thanks for watching. So if you want more knowledge on how to create a healthy body, subscribe now and get daily notifications. Daily notifications, that sounds weird. Well, I'll just remind you on a daily basis, how about that?